Yes, Julia. Yes, Julia. What was that you said? I said, yes, Julia, I can hear you perfectly. Take your jacket off, you're perspiring. You might have been considerate enough to get back a little earlier today. You knew perfectly well we were giving a tennis party. Yes, of course, my dear. For Miss Cranmere to meet Wyvern's course. But I was trying to get through my round. There are still two visits I must make. Who? Mrs. Parrott and the Curtis boy. You can see them after surgery. These lines don't look at all good. Did you tell Widdicombe to do them this morning? Well, I told him distinctly. But you know what Widdicombe is. I do. You'll have to run over them again. Yes. I shall try to find time. Try? My dear Edmund, it must be done. But my lunch... Edmund, your lunch takes much lower precedence than my tennis party. <laughs> My contention, my lad, is as follows. It was not until several weeks after he had decided to murder his wife that Dr. Bickley took any active steps in the matter. Murder is a serious business. The slightest slip may be disastrous. Dr. Bickley had no intention of risking disaster. Tell Florence to serve tea, my dear. Don't be stupid. We can't possibly serve tea until Miss Cranmere comes. Of course. I'm sorry. You were saying, Rebecca? Uh, 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 well, uh, this young woman whom we are to meet this afternoon... She's unpardonably late. Uh, do I gather that she intends to live alone at the hall? Except for the servants, of course. Yes, I fear so. A most equivocal position for one so young. I gather she's an orphan. Apparently, she's only just come into control of her money and it's quite turned her head. Dear, dear, very sad. Mm, someone will have to speak to her to let her know what one feels. Precisely. That, in fact, is what I had made up my mind to do. Not a task I should choose. Oh. I... Do you think it's a man's job? I had rather thought. My wife, do you mean? I had rather felt the responsibility to be mine. After all, one's upbringing. Ah, oh, yes. I remember my grandmother once had occasion. Uh, Lady Denbury, I mean, not Lady Cruz Danton. Daddy seems to have properly got off with that ghastly woman. What ghastly woman? It's 40.30. What point to us? That's dead. 6-2. Well, who's going to play now? Gwyneth. Shall you and I? Oh, no, I can't play. I'm terribly out of practice. Oh, come along, Gwynefred. Do you good. Give you an appetite for your tea. Now, I think we'll have a men's fall. We must have missed the chat for the game. Uh, Benji and Harford can play again. Edmund, I suppose you'll have to play to make up the fall. Oh, no, I'd forgotten Denny. He can play good. Denny Bourne, you'll play. Only too happy to give them a lesson. Good. You'll be much better than Edmund. Teddy's far too good for her. What? I think Teddy's rather sweet, don't you? I think he's an awful little worm. Well, ask Ivy what she thinks. Ivy? My sister? Do you mean you I think don't mean she... anything. And anyway, Teddy's got eyes for no one but Gwynefred Rattery nowadays. By the way, I've got those cuttings ready for you, Gwynefred. The uh, hydrangea cuttings I promised you last month. Oh, yes. Not very exciting. Hello, Ivy. Talk to Kwanin. I've got to go and play again. What is this very exciting? 
We were watching Teddy and Winifred. Oh. You'd better come along and take a look at them now, while you're free. Perhaps you'd like to come along. Now's his chance. Is that your heart beating? I can hear it from here. Yes, my heart. Don't you what you have to think you're doing. Oh, but you know I like you frightfully. No, I don't. You must have seen it. I never thought you'd like that at all. I like you better than anyone I've ever known. You say that to every girl. No, I don't. I swear I don't. Well, you've never said to me. Why not? You're a married man. I don't care. Winifred. What? Let me kiss you. No. Why not? I don't want to. But why not? Well, I couldn't kiss you. I wouldn't dream. Wife. But I like you so dreadfully. Listen, Winifred. I love you. Let me go, Dr. Bickley. No, don't call me Dr. Bickley. Call me Teddy. Please, let me go. Just let me kiss you first. I will not. I love you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. <laughs> to look for it. I'll get Edmund to. Well, if you're sure that's all yes, right. Yes, yes, you get on with your game. What a husband's for. But of course you don't know yet. You'll find out soon enough. Oh, there is Edmund. Edmund? Yes, Julia. Where have you been? I've been wanting you. You haven't met Miss Cranmere. Miss Cranmere, this is my husband, Edmund. Good afternoon. How do you do? And they're a ball short. Benji hit one into the gooseberry bushes. Go and find it at once. I wanted to tell Florence we're ready for tea. Good morning, Bickley. Good morning. On your rounds, ministering to the sick. Yes, that's it. And how's old Mrs. Brent today? She's dead. Dead, is she? Dear, dear. Well, you buried her last week. Oh. I, um, called on Miss Cranmere yesterday. Oh, yes? A most refreshing young woman, I'm glad to be able to say. You might tell your wife, most refreshing. Refreshing? Quite unlike the normal young woman of today, the flapper. Ah, yes, I see. Do you know, she promised me a hundred pounds for our restoration fund. Did she now? Offered it, no less. She had admired the church and had noticed the scaffolding on the west front. A most observant young woman. I feel she will be a credit to every one of us. Indeed. And a credit to the whole community. Bye-bye, Bickley. Good morning, Vicar. Excuse me, my dear. Where are you off to? I've seen Miss Cranmere at the hall. Then what is the matter with her? Apparently she suffers from nervous headaches. Imagination, no doubt. But she will be well able to pay for her imaginary disorders. A hundred pounds for the church restoration fund. Ten would have been ample. come so quickly. How very good of you. Not at all. When the owner of the hall sends for one, it's like a royal command. Oh, 
Did you come as quickly for Colonel Swinkum? I didn't come at all for Colonel Swinkum. He had his own doctor in Merchester. I see. Now, about these headaches. So, in fact, you've never been here before. I had heard, of course, what a beautiful house it was. Wasn't it gorgeous? You must let me show you around. Do you know about architecture? Well, something, yes. I knew you did. Oh, just a little hobby of mine, merely. You must give me your opinion. I'm thinking of having some reconstruction done. Oh, if I can be of any help. Oh, I'd so much value your advice. I say, what a magnificent view. I'll show you around now, if you like. Well, the first thing I should do, if I were you, is to get a drainage expert to look at the sanitation. Sanitation? How unromantic. Unromantic and unhealthy and positively dangerous. I shouldn't think it's been looked at much since the house was built, what, 300 years ago? If you say so, of course I shall do something about it. It needs a completely new system. Oh, they've laid tea out here. How nice. You won't stay and have some tea, won't you? Oh, well, I... Oh, please do. Otherwise, I shall have to have it all by myself. In that case. Mend it. I do so value your advice. Sugar, Dr. Bickley. I must never try to flirt with her. Two lumps, please. Edmund, why didn't you let me know that you weren't going to be into tea? Because I didn't know myself, my dear. It was very inconvenient. And you're exceedingly late for surgery. There are patients waiting for you. Well, if a man mayn't be late for his own surgery, whose surgery may he be late for? Edmund, have you been drinking? Only tea.
dairy clough on the white elephant stall. Yes, sir? On uh, cakes and confectionery, as <laughs> usual. And uh, Miss McLaurin. I say, have you heard about Madeline Cranmere? Now, now, Quanny, and dear, that isn't why you're here. Now, uh, where was I? Sorry, I didn't know you'd heard. And uh, Miss McLaurin, unlucky, did. Oh. <laughs> heard what, dear? About Madeline Cranmere. I've heard that she's unable to take charge of the preserve stall. Nor of anything else, from what I hear. What do you mean, dear? Something happened to her. No, I should say it has. Dr. Bickley's gone potty about her. Dr. Bickley? I don't care to hear that kind of gossip. Now, the restoration fund raffle. It isn't I'm gossip, Miss Lady. It's true. He goes up to the hall every day. Miss Cranmere suffers from headaches. Hence her withdrawal from the preserve stall. Headaches, perhaps. But not the sort that need a doctor dancing attendance night and day. Night? Well, afternoons anyway. <laughs> Ready, Florence? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, Miss Ridgeway, sir. She said there was no answer. Ah, oh, yes. Not a prescription I promised her, I expect. Yes, sir. Yes, that's it. Well, I'll just wash my hands. Won't be a tick. Sorry I'm late. I'm awfully busy just now. Did you want to come? I don't believe you did. Want to? Of course I wanted to. But a poor hard work GP can't always do what he wants, you know. I should have wanted to do much more if it had been Winifred Rattery. What? Winifred Rattery? What an extraordinary idea. How do you know her? You know her well enough to go away from the tennis court with her for half an hour? To get her some cuttings and it took about five minutes. Don't talk such nonsense, Ivy. I wasn't the only one who noticed it. Some cuttings that I promised her. I don't even like the girl. You ought to know me better than that, Ivy. Then I'll tell you who you do like. It's that Madeleine Cranmere. What? Oh, yes, I've heard all about it. Going up to the hall every day, dancing attendance on her, because she pretends she's ill. She happens to suffer from nervous headaches. And you're a busy, hard-work GP. Too busy to come here and meet me until I send you a note, but not too busy to go up to the hall every day. I will not have Miss Cranmere's name brought into this vulgar discussion. Yes, you will, because I'm going to bring it in, whether you like it or not. Now, I warn you. Well, if you can't see through it yourself, it's time someone told you. She's playing with you, that's all, just amusing herself. She's a flirt. Stop! <laughs> I have no interest in Miss Cranmere. Beyond the ordinary friendly relations of a a neighbor who is also a patient. Anything else is utterly absurd. You really don't like her better than me? No, of course I don't. No Gwynevid Rattery either? No, certainly not. Oh, Teddy, do you still like me best of all? Yes, yes, of course I do, Ivy. More than ever? Yes. You don't, I don't believe it. If you did, you'd be kissing me. Oh, God, you're so boring. There, there. I do like you best of all, Ivy. Oh, 
Oh, do you? Do you really? Yes, I do. Oh, darling. Well, let's have our tea. Mm. You know what day it is today? Wednesday. No, the date. Uh, the 12th. It's the anniversary of our first, you know, here. Oh, yes. You'd forgotten. For the moment. Just for the moment. Oh, I knew it was about a year. Well, somebody else thinks I'm attractive, even if you don't. I could have been somewhere quite different this afternoon if I'd wanted to. Oh, huh? where could you have been? Well, it's early closing day in Merchester. Hmm? And somebody asked me to go for a car ride with him. I nearly went, Teddy. Oh. Oh, I couldn't possibly tell you that. But I do believe he rather likes me. Come along, Ivy. Who is it? Mr. Chatford. The solicitor? Yes. He's a very good fellow, Chatford. Aren't you jealous? What? Yes, of course I am. How far has it gone? Does he want to marry you? What if he does? Just that you might do worse, Ivy. You don't want me to. Want you to? Good gracious me, no. But darling, you know you and I can never marry. Julia won't divorce me. And I couldn't be so selfish as to keep you from marrying. Oh, Teddy. Oh, I should simply hate the idea, of course. Awful. But I should have to bear it, for your sake. I shall never marry anyone if I can't marry you. Lovely to see you. You're staying out some tea? Most kind of you. Well, what's that you got over your arm? Well, oh, you brought your sketches to show me. You said you might be interested. Oh, well, I am. Can I see them now, straight away? Of course, if you want to. Spread them out here. I want to see them all. Now, these are some local scenes I did a few years ago. You may recognize some of the places. Indeed, I do. They're very good. Oh, do you think so? You have a gift. A wonderful gift. Do you really think so? Yes, I do. I sketch a little myself. You do? I knew it. Oh, but I'm hopeless. I'd do anything to have a talent like yours. Did you never think of taking it up? Of becoming an artist? Oh, no, no, no. It's only a hobby. Spare time thing. Oh. Do you like it? She must have been very beautiful. Well, as a matter of fact, I sketched that out of my head. No model. That's exactly what I mean. There's a vividness in it, a vitality, which makes one feel it must be like somebody. If it isn't, that makes it all the more remarkable. Oh, very kind of you to say so. Ooh. Incredibly lifelike without a hint of flattery. So lovely. You've been marvelous drawing from life. Would I? One would so love to have you. Really, if you're not too terribly busy, could I possibly ask you to draw me? Miss Cranmere is a very charming girl, a very generous girl. I will not hear a word against her, not even from my own daughter. Really, dear, you mustn't say such things, simply because she's unable to take charge of the preserve store. All I said was she's got Dr. Bickley on a string. Never mind about the preserves. I will find a generous helper. Dr. Bickley and Denny Warren as well. Cranny and dear, you mustn't say things like that, even if they're true. Well, where's the harm in speaking the truth? Providing that it is the truth, which in this case I very much doubt. Oh, Father. And what exactly does that mean? Well, everyone knows what she is. And the truth about Madeline Crowley... Quarney and that will be enough. But... Enough! Do you hear me? Yes, Father. A public-spirited girl like Miss Cranmere with the welfare of the parish, of the parish church at heart. Another bun. That girl, Madeline Cranmere, is getting herself talked about. Really? People around here will talk about anyone. 
She seems to have absolutely no discretion about whom she allows to visit her. Alone. Who do you mean? Denny Bourne. What? You don't mean to say they're talking about Miss Cranmer and Denny Bourne? It's disgraceful. Who told you? The vicar's wife asked my advice on the matter. Old scandal, Munger. I think it's disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. You seem very heated about it, Edmund. Well, who wouldn't be a nice girl like that? Beats me how these things get about. But they do get about. So it seems. Edmund, are you trying to seduce that girl? Look here, oh, Julia. Oh, you wouldn't bother to deny it. Normally, I don't interfere with your amusements. If a girl is fool enough to be taken in by a man like you, she must learn her lesson. But I warn you, in this case, I will not permit it. How dare you? You've absolutely no doubt to speak. shout, please, Edmund. There's no need to say any more, and I wouldn't believe you if you did. Listen to me, Julia. Miss Cranmere is I one of the... I have told you I will not allow you to pester Miss Cranmere with your attentions. You'd better not go up to the hall again. If she needs a doctor, she can send for Dr. Lidston from Merchester. That will be all. It won't be all! I won't stand for this sort of thing, even from you, Julia. You don't know the first thing about Miss Cranmere, if you imagine, for one moment. Oh, it's just like you frigid women, always finding some beastliness. Let me tell you, Miss Cranmere is the Thank purest... I have no wish to hear. You will do as I say, not go up to the hall again, and that concludes the subject. Have you finished your pudding? If so, ring for Florence to clear away. And how do you like living in Wyvern's Cross? The village itself is enchantingly pretty. And of course, I adore this dear old house. But... May I guess that the sigh is for the people of Wyvern's Cross? How well you read my mind. They have souls of clay. Have you found no one among them who is in any way? No one. No one at all. There has always been this void in my life. Mrs. Bickley is not... Unfortunately, no. Sad. No one in my own family ever understood my modest love of beauty. My tiny desire to find self-expression in some form of art. No one anywhere. Until... Oh, it's no good! I can't get you. May I see it? If you wish, but... Very clever. You think so? Really clever. But then all your work is clever. Clever, perhaps, but shallow. Oh, no. I don't see what you mean by not being able to get me. I think it's exactly like me. Oh, yes, it's like you. But anyone with a bit of a knack could draw something that would be like you. I was trying to get at you. I mean, the real you, the you I wanted to show, the you you hide from everyone, except for a tiny glimpse now and then to some lucky person. And do you imagine there is such a me? I don't imagine, I know. And I believe I've been fortunate enough to catch one or two of those glimpses. Perhaps you have. I suppose you know what I'm doing. I'm making love to you. Yes. Well, I said it was 
she's a flirt, and what's wrong with that? If she likes flirting, and she obviously does, as I do. I'm not keen at it myself. Well, she is. Oh, she must be desperate for it, or she wouldn't choose Dr. Bickley. Oh, I don't know. A horrid little man. Do you think so? Positively. Why? Oh, I just do. Oh, Gwynefred, how awful. Awful? I hadn't realised. Although I did suspect the day of the Bickley tennis party. I don't know what you mean. I did wonder when I saw you come back from the potting shed. That was quite innocent. It was. At least on my part. <laughs> quite a little beastly. Did you slap his face? Another moment and I... Good morning, girl. I can't tell you how pleased I am that you're able to take charge of the preserve store, my dear. I was beginning to get quite restless about it. Yes. Personally, I find him rather attractive. Oh, no. Horrid. What do you think, Miss Peavy? Who are you talking about, dear? Well, do you think Dr. Bickley horrid? Or do you find him rather attractive? Edmund, you weren't into tea. No. Where were you? I was at the hall. A severe headache. Please get me something from surgery to relieve it. Yes, of course. Aspirin. You're perfectly well. Aspirin doesn't suit me. Oh, I'm sorry. Get you something else. Very sleepy, very soon. I've been waiting for you. I knew Mrs. Belston was ill, so I hoped you'd be coming this way. Oh? Teddy, I must speak to you. Well, jump in then. Now, what's it all about? Teddy, I don't know how to tell you. I don't. Tell me what. Can we turn off the road? We don't want people to see us. That's all right. Just for five minutes. Must have been. I swear I haven't no one but you. Hell. I'm sorry. Well, 
I suppose it isn't your fault. Oh, Ivy, do stop that damn crying. How can I think? All right. If you really are, you needn't worry. I'll operate. But doctors aren't allowed to. Sometimes doctors have no choice. But you might kill me. It's dangerous. Do you think I'd suggest it if it was? Do use your sense. You don't care what happens to me. Teddy. Teddy. Aren't you a little bit sorry for me? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. You're not. You're cross. If you really love me, you'd be glad. Glad? Don't be such a fool. Oh, you don't love me. You don't. It wouldn't be so horrid to me. Oh. Oh, well, it's lucky I'm not going to have a baby after all. What? What was that? I made it all up to find out if you really love me. Well, now I know, don't I? So it's lucky I'm not, isn't it? You little bitch. That's right, call me names. I'm nothing now, of course. Not since you met your precious Madeline. Why don't you call her that? That's what she is and everyone knows it. She's just a... I'm so sorry. Oh, I was behind with all my visits. Oh, it's your dress for going out. Yes, I know. I ought not to have waited so long, but I had to see you first. I'm due for tea at the Bournes. Oh, you never told me. Well, how could I? Lady Bourne sent her son over with a note only this morning. Denny? Well, you should have told him you couldn't go. Well, how could I? It would have looked so bad. Not if you had a previous engagement. I know it's a nuisance, but I can't see you all the time. Only you. People will begin to talk. Good heavens, let them talk. I was thinking of you, Edmund. Gossip can do a doctor so much harm. You are the dearest girl. Edmund. It can't go on. It? Us. Why ever not? It isn't fair. To Julia. But she doesn't care for me, nor I for her. She's your wife, though. You have a duty to her. Oh, we must give each other up. I can't, darling. I can't. I, I won't. Oh, do you love me so much? More than anything. And you me? More than life itself, but we must part. We can't. It would kill us both. We must. We must. No. No. I couldn't bear to think of breaking up a marriage. An unhappy marriage. We mustn't think of ourselves, darling. That would be selfish. Madeline. But I must go, Edmund. I shall be unforgivably late. I'll speak to Julia. I forbid you to. Julia must never know. We must suffer. There's no reason why she should, too. Not a word. Promise. Will you have coffee, ma'am? No, not coffee. I have rather a headache. Oh, no, 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 later on. Uh, sit down, Edmund. I want to talk to you. That will be all, Florence. Yes, ma'am. It's no trouble, my dear. Right, Edmund. I will say what I have to say. Now, I understand that in direct contradiction to my wishes, you have been now, seeing... Now, wait a minute, Julia. I want to speak to you, too. About Miss Cranmere. I want to tell you this. I love Miss Cranmere and she loves me. And what do you propose to do about it? Well, I haven't... And how am I to know that this is not just another of the ordinary, sordid intrigues in which you have indulged continuously since the day we were married? No. Oh, you needn't no. bother to deny it. I've known them all. Irene Sanford, Sybil Whitchurch, the Ride Girl, Dean Pryor's daughter in Merchester, Ivy Ridgway, even Mabel Christie. I've said nothing because that sort of vulgarity simply doesn't interest me. But the time has come for plain speaking. How am I to know that Madeline Cranmere is not just another to be added to your squalid little list? Don't you dare mention her name in the same breath Very as well. Well. Very well. I see you think yourself rarely in love with a girl. Yes, I am. On a rather short acquaintance. It was love at first sight. I see. 
most romantic at your age. And what do you wish me to do about this love at first sight of yours? Well, I thought... I thought you might agree to divorce me. You realize such a thing would ruin your practice here? Yes, I thought of starting off again somewhere else. And you'd have to make me an allowance. As you are well aware, I have no money of my own at all. How do you propose to do that and work up a new practice at the same time? No, I don't think there'd be any difficulty about that, Julia. I see. You propose to pension off your first wife with your second wife's money? I haven't thought out any details yet. Edmund, you know perfectly well that I am not in love with you and never have been. I married you to escape from an intolerable situation at home for no other reason. Therefore, I have no moral claim on you at all. However, that is not the reason for my decision. The reason is Miss Cranmere, the most exceptional girl. I will say nothing about her taste in selecting you out of all the men who would be glad to marry her. But I will say that you are undeservedly fortunate. You mean you... I am prepared to give you your chance. Julia! But I must be certain that she is not mistaken in her feelings for you. Yours for her I will take for granted. Therefore, I stipulate that all three of us shall wait a year. If at the end of that year she still wishes to marry you, then you shall have your divorce. Good afternoon. May I see Miss Cranmere, please? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Miss Cranmere's out. Out? Oh, but I had a... Did she leave a message? No, sir. She didn't leave no message. Oh, well. Must have slipped her mind. Thank you. She had to go out. Couldn't get out of it. She left me a note explaining. Be helped. I'm glad you're back. I've had a dreadful headache all day. Would you make me up a mixture of what was it? Morphia? Yes, of course, straight away. It did me so much good last time. Won't be a take. Lady Bourne sent a Denny and me for mixed doubles at the Merchester Tournament. I don't think I can possibly play in a tournament, but I had to go there and practice. Did you hate me very much, Edmund? Good gracious me, no. Just wondered why you didn't leave a note, that's all. I couldn't. What would the servants have thought? Ah, yes, of course. Never mind about that. Got something rather splendid to tell you. I told Julia the other night about us. You told her? About us? Yes. Oh, you said but you I told you not to. You promised not to. No, darling, you I did. You did promise. No, really. You I... did. How dare you? And I didn't want you to. It's horrible of you. But I was simply trying to do the right thing. It seemed the best way was to bring it out into the open. You fool. You may have ruined the whole thing. Not just a fool, but mean and underhand. What? Doing something like that without asking me first, without my permission. But Julia's agreed to a divorce. Don't you think it's marvelous? Sorted. I think it's dreadfully embarrassing for me. I suppose you want me to be branded as the other woman. Oh, no, nothing like that. Of course not. I couldn't dream of marrying a divorced man.
Edmund, I called on Miss Cranmere this afternoon. Oh, yes? What I have to say will pain you, but it has got to be said. My interview with Miss Cranmere this afternoon was most instructive. It opened my eyes to her real character. Edmund, that girl is a hypocrite. Julie. A hypocrite. She has not the least feeling for you. She is merely amusing herself. Did you know that she is conducting a flirtation with Denny Bourne, every bit as violent as the one with you? She is a poseur of the worst description. Nothing interests her but herself and her own silly emotions. She has not the least intention of marrying you. Did she tell you that? Oh, she is the most dangerous kind of liar. The kind who can deceive not only other people, but herself as well. Oh, now, look here, Julia. Sit you down, you're... Edmund, and don't be childish. Let me make it clear to you. I have not the least intention of divorcing you for the sake of that girl. But you said... That... I know what I said, and I have withdrawn it. It would only cause you quite unnecessary unhappiness. Now, if you should ever meet a girl, a really nice Oh, girl, shut up! Shut up, you! Darling, you've been crying. Oh, she doesn't like me. I can feel it. What has she been saying about me? Oh, nothing much. What has she been saying, Edmund? Nothing really. Tell me. Well, some nonsense about you and Denny Bourne. That you've been flirting with him or something. Did you believe her? My darling, of course I didn't. Well, it's true. But you flirted with him? No. Not flirted with him, but let him be attentive to me in, in public, on purpose. Why? For your sake, Edmund. I was afraid people might start to talk about us, so I... Well, I rather encouraged poor Denny. Well, people were looking at us rather a lot. I don't think they'll talk about us anymore. Oh, my wonderful darling. Are you not cross with me? Cross? How could I be cross? But... But what? You're not fond of him, are you? Fond of him? He's only a boy. It's me you really love, isn't it? Yes, Edmund. More than anything? Well, more than life itself. Edmund? Oh, I'm glad you're back. I need some more of your morphia mixture. I've had a headache coming on all day. Yes, Julia. It was that night that Dr. Bickley made the decision that Julia must die. Good morning, Bickley. Good morning. On your rounds, ministering to the sick. Yes, that's it. And how's old Mrs. Brent today? She's dead. Dead, is she? Dear, dear. Well, you buried her last week. Oh. I, um, called on Miss Cranmere yesterday. 
Oh, yes? A most refreshing young woman, I'm glad to be able to say. You might tell your wife, most refreshing. Refreshing? Quite unlike the normal young woman of today, the flapper. Ah, yes, I see. Do you know, she promised me a hundred pounds for our restoration fund. Did she now? Offered it, no less. She had admired the church and had noticed the scaffolding on the West Front. A most observant young woman. I feel she will be a credit to every one of us. Indeed. And a credit to the whole community. Bye-bye, Vicky. Good morning, Vicar. Excuse me, my dear. Where are you off to? I've seen Miss Cranley at the hall. Then what is the matter with her? Apparently she suffers from nervous headaches. Imagination, no doubt. But she will be well able to pay for her imaginary disorders. A hundred pounds for the church restoration fund. Ten would have been ample. Of you to come so quickly. How very good of you. Not at all. When the owner of the hall sends for one, it's like a royal command. Oh, did you come as quickly for Colonel Swinkum? I didn't come at all for Colonel Swinkum. He had his own doctor in Merchester. I see. Now, about these headaches. So, in fact, you've never been here before. I had heard, of course, what a beautiful house it was. Well, isn't it gorgeous? You must let me show you around. Do you know about architecture? Well, something, yes. I knew you did. Oh, just a little a hobby of mine, merely. You must give me your opinion. I'm thinking of having some reconstruction done. Oh, if I can be of any help. Oh, I'd so much value your advice. I say, what a magnificent view. I'll show you around now, if you like. unable to take charge of the preserve stall, nor of anything else from what I hear. What do you mean, dear? Something happened to her. No, I should say it has. Dr. Bickley has gone potty about her. Dr. Bickley? I don't care to hear that kind of gossip. Now, the restoration fund raffle. It isn't I'm gossip, Miss Lady. That... It's true. He goes up to the hall every day. Miss Cranmere suffers from headaches, mm. hence her withdrawal from the preserve stall. Headaches, perhaps. But not the sort that need a doctor dancing attendance night and day. Night? Well, afternoons anyway. Ready, Florence? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, it was Thomas Ridgeway, sir. She said there was no answer. Ah, yes. Not a prescription I promised her, I expect. Yes, sir. Yes, that's it. Well, I'll just wash my hands. It won't be a tick.
weren't coming. Sorry I'm late. I'm awfully busy just now. Did you want to come? I don't believe you did. Want to? Of course I wanted to. But a poor hard work GP can't always do what he wants, you know. You'd have wanted to much more if it had been Winifred Rattery. What? Winifred Rattery? What an extraordinary idea. How do you know her? You know her well enough to go away from the tennis court with her for half an hour? To get her some cuttings and it took about five minutes. Don't talk such nonsense, Ivy. I wasn't the only one who noticed it. Some cuttings that I promised her. I don't even like the girl. Ought to know me better than that, Ivy. Then I'll tell you who you do like. It's that Madeleine Cranmere. What? Oh, yes, I've heard all about it. Going up to the hall every day, dancing attendance on her, because she pretends she's ill. She happens to suffer from nervous headaches. And you're a busy, hard work GP. Too busy to come here and meet me until I send you a note, but not too busy to go up to the hall every day. I will not have Miss Cranmere's name brought into this vulgar discussion. Yes, you will, because I'm going to bring it in, whether you like it or not. Now, I warn you. If you can't see through it yourself, it's time someone told you. She's playing with you, that's all, just amusing herself. She's a flirt. Stop! <laughs> I have no interest in Miss Cranmere. Beyond the ordinary friendly relations of a a neighbor who is also a patient. Yes, Julia. There's one of the two tables to be taken out in the chair. And I think we're going to have the bathing turned up as well in this stuff. Can you hear me, Edward? Yes, Julia. What was that you said? I said, yes, Julia, I can hear you perfectly. Take your jacket off, you're perspiring. You might have been considerate enough to get back a little earlier today. You knew perfectly well we were giving a tennis party. Yes, of course, my dear. For Miss Cranmere to meet Wyvern's course. But I was trying to get through my round. There are still two visits I must make. Whom? Mrs. Parrott and the Curtis boy. You can see them after surgery. These lines don't look at all good. Did you tell Widdicombe to do them this morning? Well, I told him distinctly. But you know what Widdicombe is. I do. You'll have to run over them again. Yes, I shall try to find time. Try? My dear Edmund, it must be done. But my lunch... Edmund, your lunch takes much lower precedence than my tennis party. My contention, my love, is as follows. It was not until several weeks after he had decided to murder his wife that Dr. Bickley took any active steps in the matter. Murder is a serious business. The slightest slip may be disastrous. Dr. Bickley had no intention of risking disaster.
tell Florence to serve tea, my dear. Don't be stupid. We can't possibly serve tea until Miss Cranmere comes. Of course. I'm sorry. You were saying, Vicar? Uh, uh, well, uh, this young woman whom we are to meet this afternoon... She's unpardonably late. Uh, do I gather that she intends to live alone at the hall? Except for the servants, of course. Yes, I fear so. A most equivocal position for one so young. I gather she's an orphan. Apparently, she's only just come into control of her money and it's quite turned her head. Dear, dear, very sad. Mm, someone will have to speak to her to let her know what one feels. Precisely. That, in fact, is what I had made up my mind to do. Not a task I should choose. Oh. But, uh... Do you think it's a man's job? I had rather thought. My wife, do you mean? I had rather felt the responsibility to be mine. After all, one's upbringing. Ah, yes. I remember my grandmother once had occasion. Uh, Lady Denbury, I mean, not Lady Cruz Danton. Daddy seems to have properly got off with that ghastly woman. What ghastly woman? It's 40.30. Set point to us. That's dead. 6-2. Well, who's going to play now? Gwyneth. Shall you and I? Oh, no, I can't play. I'm terribly out of practice. Oh, come along, Grinifred. Do you good. Give you an appetite for your tea. Now, I think we'll have a men's four. We must have missed a chat for the game. Uh, Benji and Harford can play again. Edmund, I suppose you'll have to play to make up the four. Oh, no, I'd forgotten Denny. He can play good. Denny Bourne, you'll play. Only too happy to give them a lesson. Good. You'll be much better than Edmund. Teddy's far too good for her. What? I think Teddy's rather sweet, don't you? I think he's an awful little worm. Well, ask Ivy what she thinks. Ivy? My sister? Do you mean you I think don't that mean she... anything. And anyway, Teddy's got eyes for no one but Gwynefred Rattery nowadays. By the way, I've got those cuttings ready for you, Gwynefred. The uh, hydrangea cuttings I promised you last month. Oh, yes. Not very exciting. Hello, Ivy. Talk to Kwan and I've got to go and play again. What is this very exciting? We were watching Teddy and Winifred. Oh. You'd better come along and take a look at them now, while you're free. Perhaps you'd like to come along. Now's his chance. Is that your heart beating? I can hear it from here. Yes, my heart. Don't you believe what on do you think you're doing? Oh, but you know I like you frightfully. No, I don't. You must have seen it. I've never thought of you like that at all. I like you better than anyone I've ever known. You say that to every girl. No, I don't. I swear I don't. Well, you've never said to me. Why not? You're a married man. I don't care, Gwynefred. What? Let me kiss you. No! Why not? I don't want to. But why not? Well, I couldn't kiss you. I wouldn't dream. But I like you so dreadfully. Listen, Winifred. I love you. Let me go, Dr. Bickley. Oh, don't call me Dr. Bickley. Call me Teddy. Please, let me go. Just let me kiss you first. I will not. I love you. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care. I <laughs> to look for it. I'll get Edmund to. Uh, well, if you're sure that's all yes, right. Yes, yes, you get on with your game. What are husbands for? But of course you don't know yet. You'll find out soon enough. Oh, there is Edmund. Edmund? Yes, Julia. Where have you been? I've been wanting you. You haven't met Miss Cranmere. Miss Cranmere, this is my husband, Edmund. Good afternoon. How do you do? And they're a ball short. Benji hit one into the gooseberry bushes. Go and find it at once. <laughs> Well, the first thing I should do, if I were you, is to get a drainage expert to look at the sanitation. Sanitation? How unromantic. Unromantic and unhealthy and positively dangerous. I shouldn't think it's been looked at much since the house was built, what, 300 years ago? 
If you say so, of course, I shall do something about it. It makes a completely new system. Oh, they've left tea out here. How nice. You will stay and have some tea, won't you? Oh, well, I... Oh, please do. Otherwise, I shall have to have it all by myself. In that case. Mend it. I do so value your advice. Sugar, Dr. Bickley. I must never try to flirt with her. Two lumps, please. let me know that you weren't going to be into tea. Because I didn't know myself, my dear. It was very inconvenient. And you're exceedingly late for surgery. There are patients waiting for you. Well, if a man mayn't be late for his own surgery, whose surgery may he be late for? Edmund, have you been drinking? Only tea. on the white elephant stall. Your son? On uh, cakes and confectionery, as <laughs> usual. And uh, Miss McLaurin. I say, have you heard about Madeline Cranmere? Now, now, Quanny, and dear, that isn't why you're here. Now, where was I? Sorry, I didn't know you'd heard. And Miss McLaurin.